All right, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'd like to do is uh, introduce myself for those that don't know me. I'm Les Johnson. I am the chair of this year's symposium. This is the fifth meeting, believe it or not, of the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop. And this is our first year to actually do it in association with other organizations. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But I'm really excited. This is also our biggest meeting. Uh, the TVIW began really at a, uh, a space conference in Austa, Italy. Uh, with a few of us from the Tennessee Valley, which stretches from uh, uh, near Oak Ridge in Knoxville, Tennessee, down through Chattanooga and through Huntsville. I've had a lot of people question, uh, why are we having a Tennessee meeting in Alabama? Well, we're on the Tennessee River, and the Tennessee River Valley is uh, the Tennessee Valley, and there are lots of things that happen in this corridor between Oak Ridge, Knoxville, Chattanooga, and Huntsville that are commonly called the Tennessee Valley Corridor. And one of the strengths of this region is the talent pool that lies here. There's a tremendous engineering and science talent pool between the Oak Ridge National Laboratories, the Tennessee Valley Authority, and the Marshall Space Flight Center, Redstone Arsenal, Missile Defense Agency, uh, Space and Missile Defense Command that are located here at Redstone. We also have a tremendous talent pool of writers and authors in the Tennessee Valley that stretches uh, along that, that, that corridor there and lots of people interested in space and space exploration. And it's on behalf of all of those that I want to welcome those of you from not in the region to the region. And we hope you enjoy yourselves here and have a chance to see a little bit of the area and the community. There's a lot to offer here. Uh, there's a lot of green spaces. And uh, we haven't put any time in the schedule whatsoever for you to explore the area on your own until Saturday. And we hope that some of you can stay through then at least and see some of the community. To, to begin, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the sponsors for today's event. Uh, this is our first time actually to do it beyond just a Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop as an organization. TVIW is a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, our charter is to do education outreach and, and foster interstellar travel uh, for the human species in the future. Uh, but we this year decided that there were too many darn interstellar meetings. How many people agree with that, right? There are too many. And what we tried to do is we tried to get the interstellar organizations together and have a common interest and bring all of it to the table and do one meeting if we could do this year. Well, we've been partially successful. Uh, this year we are partnered with Starship Century and the Tau Zero Foundation who are working with us to provide the next three days of events for you. Uh, we've divided up responsibility generally along the lines of each organization has a day that they're primarily responsible for invited speakers and the morning session. We had an open call for papers where we selected papers for generally the afternoon sessions, and then for the working tracks, which I'll explain in a minute, the Sagan meetings and the discussion groups were all in. So I, I really want to thank those partner organizations, and I think everybody here should thank them, because instead of them going off doing their own meeting, we're all here together. And that, that's a big deal, so thank you so much. I'd also like to thank our other sponsors, which are here on the list, who have either contributed financially at various levels who have provided in-kind contributions to help make the meeting possible. Now, I want to emphasize the fact that there are no paid staff in this organization. Everything that's happening here, except for what we pay the hotel to do, is done by volunteers after work hours on their own time because of the love for what they're doing and the common vision that we all have, all right? So please take this meeting in that spirit, and if something royally is messed up, Please keep in mind that the people you're yelling at are people who are doing this for the heck of it, all right? And they're volunteering. Our theme this year is step-by-step, step, building a ladder to the stars. And I think that uh, you, you will agree that we're not going to go to the stars tomorrow. It's going to be an incremental step. It's going to be incremental progress. And many of us, unfortunately, may not be around when that event actually happens. But I really believe, and, and I've told people this personally, in my own career, I, I work at NASA at the Marshall Space Flight Center in my day job. I write science fiction uh, for Bain Books as part of, of my love because science fiction got me interested in physics and science. And that's why I do what I do, is because of reading science fiction. Uh, but I think most people in this room, most people in the organizations that are sponsoring this will agree that wouldn't it be great if when the first uh, outpost colony uh, human exploration mission that actually successfully reaches another star and they're writing the history of that colony, wouldn't it be nice for something that you were involved in to at least be a footnote in that history? Mm. 
And I think that that should be the aspiration of the people in this room is that we make a contribution so that when that day happens, what we've done is at least remembered as a footnote in the history of that first settlement around another star. And, and that's what motivates me, and I, I see a lot of heads nodding, you, you agree. So let's keep that in mind, and let's realize that we can make a difference, and, and that meetings like this, getting everybody together, are a step toward that goal. Uh, it's impossible for me to, to list the names of everybody who has contributed. A lot of people who are contributing to making the event happen today couldn't even be here. If you've seen the wonderful promotional video, the vlog that is on our home page, that was done by a fellow named Buck Field. He, he couldn't be here, but he did this video because he, he really believes in what we're doing and wanted to make his contribution. And that's just one example. So if I would like to ask that if you're on the organizing committee, the program committee, the PR committee, the IT committee, or volunteered in any capacity for this, please stand up. Please, just stand up for a second. You're part of the volunteer staff. Thank you. Thank you for what you did to make it happen. Uh, people say, oh, the chairman has all this work. I don't. I just point to people and make sure that everybody's doing what they're doing. And uh, it's worked really well. This has been a great group to work with. I think you will enjoy the proceedings when we get them pulled together. This will be the first meeting that we actually have full proceedings of all the papers and presentations given. Uh, we've had some meetings where we've had the uh, selected papers published in various journals. Uh, but we're actually going to have our own proceedings for everybody after this is complete. And I think you'll enjoy seeing that. I have to give a personal note. I just returned from the International Astronautical Congress in Australia. Uh, while I was there, I had a chance to do some sightseeing. I'd never been in the Southern Hemisphere before. But we had one night in the mountains, in the Grampian Mountains to be precise, on a new moon with low humidity and absolutely no clouds in the sky. And for the first time in my life, I saw the glory of the Milky Way that I have never seen before from the Southern Hemisphere. It was so bright, you could see your shadow from the light of the Milky Way, all right? And if you know the southern sky, which I did not, I was also able to see things that I never imagined I'd be able to see myself, which are the greater and lesser Magellanic clouds, which are visible to the naked eye, hovering above our galaxy, and pointing toward the Southern Cross was what a lot of us are dreaming of and have read about, which is Alpha Centauri. And it was the first time I'd ever seen it. And to me, it was one of the best motivators I could possibly have had last week before coming into this meeting. So I, I had to share, you know, pictures. I didn't take these pictures. These are the best I could find. Here we have Alpha Sin. Oh my gosh, I'm ready. Let's get that footnote, okay? Um, this is also an anniversary. Uh, the date for this symposium was picked to coincide with, uh, coincide with the anniversary of the beginning of the space age, which was the launch of the Sputnik. Uh, I was warned by a few people here in Huntsville Less that was a Soviet Russian thing. You're going to be in Huntsville with this meeting. Are you sure you want to talk about Sputnik? Uh, and the answer is yes, because it was the dawn of the space age for our species. Okay? And, and if it caused a space race that ultimately led us to the moon and beyond, so be it. Uh, it was a momentous event, a momentous occasion. It happened before my birth. Uh, despite the gray hair, I wasn't around when Sputnik flew. The lack of hair, I should say. Uh, but it's something we want to remember and to commemorate, and here in Space Week, that's an exciting time to do that. I mentioned the TDIW. Uh, I'm going to do a, a little bit of a, a plug for our organization. Uh, we are an educational nonprofit. This year, we actually awarded three scholarships to students who had to compete academically for these scholarships. Uh, they were in the amount of $2,500. Thanks to our sponsors, we had some funding to do this after our last symposium. Uh, we had a competition. And these young people are uh, pursuing studies that uh, are aligned with the goals uh, or related to goals of what we view as needed to go to the stars. They had to write an essay on the importance of, of space exploration and how that might lead us to becoming a spacefaring species. I don't believe these young people are able to be with us this week, but I wanted to acknowledge, acknowledge the winners of our first ever scholarship competition. By the way, we're open if anybody else would like to help contribute and make more scholarships happen next year. Uh, as a nonprofit, it would be a tax-deductible contribution. We'd love uh, to have you talk to us if you're interested in supporting us as we try to further these scholarships. But our three winners were Margaret Horton, Emily Kearns, and Rohan Varshney. And uh, we're really excited, and we hope to keep up with these students as they pursue their studies and get them to come to a future meeting and perhaps present on some of the work that they do in school. It's, it's been something we've wanted to do more than just the symposia. We want to actually get out there and make a difference in young people's lives. 
I want to acknowledge some achievements and significant things. Bob, I don't know if you knew we were going to do this, but uh, we wanted to, to uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, one of our presenters and people participating today recently had an asteroid named in their honor. It was in the 90s. Oh, I thought it was recent. No. Okay. All right. Well, oh, we just heard about it. Okay. Well, congratulations. <laughs> so, congratulations. I'm not sure if he's happy or he's going to talk to Jim later. I can't figure it out yet, but I um, wanted to, to, to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge a pretty significant achievement here at Marshall that I'm connected with, and that is we just deployed uh, three weeks ago our 86 square meter solar sail for the Near Earth Asteroid Scout mission, uh, for which I have the privilege of serving as the PI. And yes, there I am in my bunny suit uh, taking a look at the, uh, the sail. Uh, shameless plug for the NIA Scout, we are uh, to fly in 2019. Uh, we are going to asteroid 1991 VG is our goal. We have a camera on board. And if we are successful at a future TVIW meeting, we might have another named asteroid because our team will be eligible to name it if we actually reach the asteroid. So uh, we might be able to do that. <laughs> We're probably going to have some kind of a competition. And it will not be Bodie McBoatface, I assure you. Um, if you heard about internet competitions, we, we won't let that happen. But folks, this is tied into this meeting because, as you're going to hear from Breakthrough Starshot uh, today, sales are one of the ways that we might actually reach the stars. And uh, one of the reasons, and I've got some people from NASA here, I guess it's no secret, uh, one of the reasons I started working solar sales in my career is because early in my career, I worked on the Interstellar Propulsion Research Project and learned that solar sails were one of those viable technologies that might let us go to the stars. And so we're just going to an asteroid just with this sail, but I view it as one of those latter steps to the stars. Um, I also would like to announce uh, in, uh, that thanks to uh, uh, the vision of uh, uh, Tony Wyskopf and Bain Books, there are going to be uh, two new science fiction, science fact anthologies published within the next year and a half. Uh, one, uh, both of which will be sp are, are inspired by uh, TVIW meetings. In fact, the first is called Homo Stellaris. That will be edited by Dr. Robert Hampson and myself. And it is uh, out of a, one of our working tracks that we had last year, which was titled Homo Stellaris. And the goal of that is to discuss in fiction and in fact, we're going to get scientists to talk about future developments in human augmentation, transhumanism, what we might become. <coughs> as well as original science fiction stories by acclaimed authors talking about the implications and what it will mean as we go to the stars for us as a human species. Uh, the other uh, anthology, for which I've already got a few contributors here in the room lined up, is a prequel to the Going Interstellar anthology published a few years ago, which will also be science fiction and science fact, but it's going to talk about the necessary steps we have to take in our solar system before we can take that leap to the stars. So uh, look for those. Hopefully we'll have those at a, uh, at a future TVIW meeting, and uh, people in the room here will be contributors to those. Beth? Yes? Will, will they be doing the uh, educational uh, back end of that as well? I, I hope so, but that's going to be up to the publisher, and we'll have to work with Tony. So if you like that, um, let, let her know. That's uh, the Going Interstellar anthology. There was a teacher's guide that was prepared for that for to help out in the schools so that uh, lit students can learn science and science students can learn how to read a story. Um, so that was uh, no booze. Um, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a BA in physics and went on to graduate school and studied physics, so I can, I can, I can attack both sides with <coughs> equanimity. Right? Um, I want to mention that today we are having our working tracks. This is a signature part of TVIW. You, if, for those of you who haven't been here before, you go to meetings, you go to symposia, you hear papers all day. We do papers for about two-thirds of the day. Then we ask you to roll up your sleeves and get to work. You were asked to sign up for working tracks. You could sign up for what we call Sagan meetings. And if you really didn't have a clue what was going on, it's not too late to sign up for those. Uh, we also have discussion groups. Let me explain those real quickly. Uh, today in the working tracks, we have uh, the ones that are listed here, step-by-step -step to the stars, planning for first contact, and the involving role of security and intel in space. And it is, it is where we divide up into groups. We have moderators. They have activities they want to accomplish. And we want your talent and expertise to develop original products from these working groups. And we have had the products of these working groups published or to be published in the past. So this is the opportunity to have collaboration across disciplines to make a contribution to the field. These will meet every afternoon of the symposium, give an outbrief of their products on Friday afternoon, 
The chairs and the moderators will then go off and turn these into some kind of a document or report that we can hope to get published or put out somewhere. We also have Sagan meetings. Uh, there's a history of these Sagan meetings uh, that is, is in your book and, and you could sign up for these. These are new topics every day with a similar goal uh, to explore topics related to interstellar flight and, and come out with products that again might be publishable. Today's meeting is the likelihood of biosignature detection in the spectra of exoplanets. Then we have on Thursday, uh, are we going to slow down or whiz by a nearby star? Having recently been a part of a study that you'll hear about today that uh, Dr. Weinstein Weiss is going to tell us about, uh, that was a big issue. Do we slow down or do we fly by? And then on Friday, uh, we'll be hearing about a pretty exciting uh, possible mission that I believe is, has an incredible amount of promise for letting us actually image an exoplanet, which is pretty exciting. We have a couple of speakers on that Friday, and then that'll be the topic of Friday's Sagan meeting. For those of you who think these are boring topics and have something just incredibly exciting you want to get into, we will be having free-form discussion groups that will meet in the lobby. There is a sign-up sheet or a list of the discussion groups that people have proposed that's at the desk in the lobby. Uh, David Fields, David, are you here? If you are, please raise your hand or stand up. Is our discussion group coordinator. The discussion groups will actually meet over there when the divider is put up. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Appreciate that. So we have the discussion groups meeting there. We have lots of evening events. Uh, thanks again to Bain for the wonderful opening reception last night. Tonight we have an art show and reception. Uh, it'll be in the Marshall Room behind the restaurant. Please plan to attend. We have heavy hors d'oeuvres like, uh, like last night. Uh, we will be honoring a local artist, a, guy named, a young man named Chris Wade, who has a studio in the arts uh, facility here in town. I had the privilege of meeting Chris when my son's car broke down outside of his house. And he came out and he helped my son until I could get there to get things going. Uh, and then our paths crossed a few more times and the next thing you know, Fritz, who is one of our art collectors in the science fiction community here, said, hey Les, we need to feature an artist at TVIW. There's this great young space artist named Chris Wade. Ah. So uh, it's, it's really a small community and, and please look forward to seeing his artwork displayed tonight. I think you'll be impressed. Uh, he's really talented and we're really glad that he's contributing to the event. Uh, we'll also have live music from the Valley Conservatory, which is a local classical uh, educational organization. They teach music. They also play wonderful music. And uh, there is an after the event event that you can go to as well for those that are night owls. Uh, with a little bit more modern music and additional beverages. Uh, and I think there's some flyers about that that are out and about. Uh, Thursday night, we are having a public event at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center where the rocket is located. Uh, we're going to be eating quickly because we run long time, but quickly leave here on Thursday, go to the Space and Rocket Center, buy your meal at the Beer Garden. Uh, we still have remnants of the Von Braun team's influence on Huntsville and we have a lot of German food here. And uh, they have wonderful schnitzel and uh, sauerkraut and sausage. And then at seven o'clock, we have a special presentation for the entire community and it's open to the community uh, that's given to us by Dr. Andrew Simeon uh, on the search for ourselves among the stars. Friday, we are especially thrilled to also to have a public event open to the public Friday night, 8 o'clock, hang around. It's where the science fiction, uh, some of the science fiction writers in our midst are going to have a panel discussion talking about the inspiration for interstellar travel and, and their work. And if you have any of your books, that you please bring them. You'll have an opportunity for getting autographs at that event. And then we're done. Uh, enjoy the hospitality suite in between when you have free time. Uh, that's in room 1030. We have beverages, uh, snacks, those kinds of things available in room 1030. Other scheduled events, we have lunch today at 1245 in the Atrium Restaurant. Um, I also have to let you know, with apologies, yesterday the bus company was late with the bus to the ULA tour. How many people went on the ULA tour to see the Atlas V under assembly? Was it worth going? Yes. I thought so. I th I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, one of the other signature events of every TVIW that we've had is we've had an industry tour. Uh, this is the second time we've uh, met in Huntsville and the second time we've taken people to United Launch Alliance where you can see uh, actual rockets under construction. When we met at Oak Ridge, we went to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory and we always try to have that as a part of our, our event is to have some kind of an industry tour that our participants can go to. But apologies for the bus being late. We're hoping to recover some of what we paid them. Uh, and that's going to be part of activities. Um, let's see. And lastly, uh, we are going to have a list for carpooling to the event of the Space and Rocket Center on Thursday because we know not everyone has a car. And there won't be time to catch a taxi, and I'm not sure how frequently Uber runs by here. So Martha, where will the sign-up list be? 
it'll be at the registration desk if you want to sign up for the, uh, the carpool to ride or give a ride to folks to the event Thursday night at the Space and Rocket Center. Please do that at the desk. All right, before I hand it over to Jim Benford, who is going to begin this morning's session on behalf of Starship Century, are there any questions? Anything I need to feel for folks? All right, let's get rolling.